Worshippers of the Living God Ministry presents Restoring True Worship to God's People from West Palm Beach, Florida with Evangelist and Apostolic Worship Leader the leadership Jacob Tobeck. This we'll is the last night. Tonight, many decisions are going to have to be made in your lives. Most of the time is going to be spent teaching true worship in the Holy of Holies, the worship of heaven that you will learn. Priests, which you are now, which you've been sealed as Yahweh, Yahshua, and the Holy Spirit, you are sealed as priests, priests must know the business of worship and God will teach you his worship tonight. And no, you won't get it all in one night. This is 13 years, 24 hours a day, he spills into me one thing, worship. Worship is the key. Those pastors, apostles, bishops, prophets, believers who are watching this broadcast tonight, you need to obey God. I've traveled to beautiful churches in Oklahoma, four or 5,000 people with beautiful guitars on the stage beautiful coffee counters, beautiful sanctuaries, beautiful praise music, but the sanctuaries are in ruins because they have no worship. Empty tombs. purpose of the church, the purpose of the sanctuary is not to please people and not to hear a man come on Sunday to preach. The purpose of a sanctuary of God is firstly to honor Yahweh, Yahshua, and the Holy Spirit. They're our God, not people. They are the ones you, we serve. That's the focus. It's always been this way. After we honor God, then we bring the word, and God will exhale the offering with his glory. True worship is worship that is according to the word of God and not according to the dead traditions of men. Worship leaders must be raised up now. Satan has invaded the body rendering us powerless because there is no worship in the sanctuaries. God is going to do a quick work with those who hear what the Spirit is saying. A worship leader is one number one who must know how to worship. He must know what worship is. And number two, he must have the authority from heaven to lead the priest from the outer court into the inner court. I wish I had somebody just could find it. It was Aaron's sons. They were in the middle of the glory of God. They had just offered the offering. And then the sons put fire in the censer, as it says. 
And as soon as they put the fire in the censers, the fire of God came down and consumed the two priests, and they were dead, Aaron's sons. It says that Aaron said not a word that day because they offered unauthorized worship. You wonder why I speak loudly. You wonder why I have passion. Hell and heaven cause me to have passion. After 18 years of looking into souls' faces in the streets, looking at heaven and hell, you begin to have passion. You can't not have passion. If you have much of the Holy Spirit, you will have passion. I'd rather you be hot or cold. But if you are lukewarm, if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out. Another word is I will vomit you out of my mouth. I'd rather you cold. Say you don't love me, then I can do something with you. If you're hot, I love it. But to tell me that you are madly, passionately in love with me, but never come into my bedroom, that's called lukewarm. The professor of a woman being the most romantic woman in the world, when they come into marriage counseling, the husband says, forget it. And all of a sudden, the truth comes out. Or vice versa on a man. Hmm. What's this? Money. How much money? $100. How much? One hundred dollars. No. Hundred dollar bill. Thousand dollar. Thousand dollar bill. No. No, a hundred dollar bill. We'll pray for the mice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Is it a hundred dollar bill? Is it? Yes, sir. What's your name, brother? Carl. Carl? Yes. What is this? It's money. I said, how much money is it? Bill. Is it a hundred dollar bill? Yes, it, yes. it really is a hundred dollar bill, isn't it? Yes. Here. It's an illusion. Uh, an illusion? No, it's it looks like to you. It's not imagined. We'll take it. Is it real? Absolutely not. It's called counterfeit. Counterfeit is a word that means it's made to look like it, to smell like it, but those who have expert eyes take a close look. It's counterfeit. It's worth nothing. Having a form of godliness having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, preaching Jesus, having faith conferences and money conferences and Jesus conferences. Yet when it comes to honoring the one that's supposed to be in charge of the conference, the worship is missing. Yeah. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. When you come into a realization of the one you serve, 
You don't need Jacob coming to the body of Yahshua and having to tell leadership, you must worship him. You must know. Tonight I am not going to do this and insult my master. Tonight I come with open hands and I say, whoever will, come. Apostles, bishops, pastors, prophets, believers, whoever will, Bring worship into their sanctuaries to honor the Most High. We're here to serve you. We're here to teach you. We're here to instruct you as servants. We don't charge money to do this. We come from heaven. Heaven does not charge money to speak. Flesh charges money to speak. Yes, offerings are given for airline tickets. Yes, we have expenses for rooms. But my goodness gracious, leaders, don't you dare ever pay a penny for any man coming to this sanctuary to open his mouth. He is a phony. You disgrace the name of the Lord. How dare we charge a fee to speak what we've gotten for free. This is the house of Yahweh. He loves his people. Could you imagine Yahshua coming and saying, I'm coming to speak, write out a check for $5,000? We must repent. Repent. Turn your laughter to wailing. We've sinned against the Lord. You say to me, why do you say we have no worship? We've gone two meetings, and tonight we're going to the third meeting. And we're going right into Satan's hole, the father of lies, the one who has stolen the worship from God's people. And I'm going to have two mighty ones of God here to support, to hold me up in this. We're going to get a Bible, one Bible that you're using, and the Tanakh, woman of God, come up here. Sometimes it's time to pray, and sometimes it's time to open the oceans up. Here, remember he told Moses? Okay, We're gonna, you're going to read Psalms. Help her over here, Lori. Find Psalms 39. We're going to go to start. The way we teach to worship again. Worship leaders, pay attention. Pastors, pay attention. Apostles, pay attention. Believers, pay attention. Where's my little boy? Where's that little boy over here who was over here during worship? You, what's your name? What's your name? James? Jamie. 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 Who? Jahini. Oh, Jahini. Stand up for a second. Now, come over here for a second. Come on out here. Who do you be? Of course he's beautiful. Who do you belong to? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Come over here. Leave that thing over here for a second. Were you here the first two nights? Yes. See, I got five kids and 15 grandkids. Wow. I start them out young. Real young. I don't hide them in the back. They sit right next to me. I want to ask you a question. Look at me. Did you hear me preaching worship first two nights? Yes. What did I, what did I say God said worship was? Um, worship was... You forgot? Hmm. I guess you did forget because I noticed you during the service. What were you doing during the service? Okay. Sitting or standing? Um, I'm um, sitting. Yeah, and well, and standing, right? Yes. Okay, you're going to stay right next to me tonight. You see, what this boy is going to learn tonight is going to keep him off drugs and alcohol for the rest of his life. Amen. You're going to learn tonight from God personally. He's going to teach you right now. I want you to pay attention because you're not too young. Now's the time to know who your God is Amen. and what, what's going on and what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing because you're not too young. He's important. He's your future. So you're going to stay right next to Jacob. Okay, we're going to teach it. That's the way we bring them up from the beginning. Now, everyone listen. It's simple, worship leaders. This is very simple. Psalms 29 in our Bibles read, man of God. 
29. It's Psalms 29. That's the one that God teaches us where the, how, what worship is about. This is the way he taught me. You say, God taught me, Jacob? Yes, he taught me. And if, I, if you don't believe he taught me, then I stole it from somebody. But whatever you want to believe, it's the word of God. It doesn't matter whether he gave it to me personally. It's the word of God. So let's hear the word of God. And, and here it comes from the, the man of that, the, the God from the house. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Beautiful. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, we've all read that. However, the question is, again, what does the word worship mean? So, what is the original language of the Old Testament, everybody? Hebrew. A louder. Hebrew. Good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a book called the Tanakh. Now, the Tanakh I got from the Jews when I was preaching down in Brooklyn, and what they did was they saw me with a yarmulke and a prayer shawl preaching Jesus, and I don't have to tell you what the Orthodox Jews did. <laughs> but the last thing he told me was this. Why don't you go to the store and get yourself a real Bible? You see, God, no matter what, never goes out his will. Salvation is for the Jew first, and then... For the worship had to come through the Jew. So the Jewish rabbi told me, after telling me I was a traitor, mm -hmm. told me to go and pick up a real Bible. So I went and I picked it up, and I never looked at it until about four months later when God came and visited me and said, son, go to the Tanakh. So I run, I'm shaking, looking at the Tanakh, and now he says, go to Psalms 29. So now, this is what I read. I want to take you through this experience with me now and see if you get affected the same way that I got affected. Because I always bow down. I thought it was a natural thing to do, but I didn't care about it. But when God showed me the word, this is where the power comes in. Listen carefully. Many people bow down because they reverence God. But the power comes when you get the word the dunamis power, and combine it with the action, and this is what releases the glory and the power of God. When you know why you're doing it, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. So now, read what it says now in Psalms 29. Render unto Yahweh, you sons of the powerful. Render unto Yahweh honor and might. Render unto Yahweh the honor due. His it all agrees so far, the honor due his name. But now, here it comes. Bow to your Yahweh in the beauty of holiness. What was that? Bow. Say it aloud. What is that? Bow. It's a three-letter word. Do you know what the word bow means? Well, no. Yes. Show me what it means. It says, bow to the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Instead of worship, the real word is bow. That's what worship is, bow. Praise is honoring God for what he's done. Bow to the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, you say, but Jacob, this Tanakh, I don't know about. Well, then what we're going to do again is we're going to use what every leader in this country uses to define the word of, of God. And it's called what? Pastor? The Strong's what is that? Strong's it's the Strong's Concordance. Bishop, apostles, you know what I'm talking about. This is the book you use. Well, why don't we go inside, out in the open on the rooftop, and find out what the word worship means, worship leaders. Now, don't get mad. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I've had experience. A lot of people don't like correction. But why? He who loves correction loves knowledge. And he who corre hates correction, Proverbs 12, Father says they're stupid. And we're not stupid. So we love correction. Father, I love correction. If you got something to correct in me today, correct me. I'll learn something. I'll become better for it. So what we're going to do now, and make this real simple, pay attention because you're involved, is this. That's right, get them in tight. Is, why don't you read 
what the word worship is in our concordance. This is simple. We're just tying things up tonight before we go in the Holy of Holies. Okay, this is, okay. This is the, um, the Hebrew, the Shekhoia. Shekhoia is the word. It's the Hebrew word for worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You check it out. It's right there. Go ahead. The word is 78 what? 7812? 7812. It means to depress, prostrate, Reflecting homage to royalty or God, bow self down, crouch, fall down, flat, humbly, beseech, do make obedience. Beseance, Obe that means bow. Do reverence, make to stoop, worship. Okay, did anybody hear the word sit? No. Nope. Did anybody hear the word stand? No. Did anybody even hear the word sing? No. no. Worship leaders, the meaning of the word worship, thus saith the Lord of hosts, apostles, bishops, believers, bow, kneel, prostrate, stoop, crouch. What do you do when the word of God comes to you face to face? Do you push it away and say, no, we want to stay with our tradition? Then you will be in stubbornness, which is the sin of idolatry. And this will mature into rebellion, which will mature into witchcraft. You must make your choice tonight. Not for me, but for the three that are sitting on the throne tonight. And I promise you, you will know tonight that they are sitting on this throne because when I'm finished speaking, they're going to finish the service tonight. Hallelujah. Because they will never leave the preacher ashamed when they send them with a message. You want me to read the Greek? No, we're not up to the Greek. So, that was... Now... The most popular song for the last three years, or probably, let's put it this way, worship leaders, that you've been singing on the stage is one of these songs which I'm going to sing. Here we are to worship. Here we no, I'm not laughing. No. You see, I, why do I get aggravated when people laugh about this? Now, it's not that you are doing anything wrong, okay? And maybe I sometimes... Go past what I have. Maybe I shouldn't be telling people they shouldn't be left. Maybe we have to have some sense of humor. But I don't find it funny. I find it an insult to my father. Amen. I'm not laughing. I'm crying. Tell me what's so funny. Here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Huh? Huh? To bow down, to bow down. You honor me with your mouth, but your hearts are far from me, says the Lord. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's got to stop. There's got to be a voice in the wilderness from heaven to say to the believers, open your eyes and see the truth. Amen. When is there going to be a standard that says, it's enough? Amen. Amen. We will not mock God. God will not be mocked. Here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down with our mouth. You have to have the heart for the jealousy of his honor. Why would you want him to be on it? Because he saved your neck and mine. He died on that cross, torn up like an animal for each of us. We can never pay the debt back to him. But the least we can do, the very least we can do is fight for his honor as a God. My God, the Muslim population, they're willing to die for, for Islam. And we're not even willing to put our face to the ground. This isn't about religion. Religion will kill you. He's either your master, your husband, or he's not. 
Make your choice tonight. Make your choice tonight, bishops, apostles, pastors. If you're in any doubt, ask your wife. She'll tell you it's true. Let's go to the New Testament. Satan comes after 40 days of fasting to Yahshua. Matthew 4, chapter, uh, verse 11, 12, whatever there. He comes to Yahshua and says, I will give you anything if you'll do only one thing. Let's read that. He comes, he comes to Yahshua. The three temptations. He's in the wilderness, fasting. Chapter 4, where is it? Chapter 4, where is it? Um, Jesus said to him, well, it is written. Let's see, let me go before that. Yes, read it nice and loud, Pastor. I want to hear heaven. He listened to this hell, hear it, and heaven. Everything in creation, hear this statement tonight. Four, I'm going to go to 4 5. Then the devil taken him up into a holy city and settled him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. He no. shall give the angel charge the concerning thee, that. Yeah. And, 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 and in their hands they should bear thy up, lest any time thou should dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taking him up into an exceedingly high mountain, showing, showing him all the kingdoms of the world. Listen now. And the glory of them, and said unto him, all these things will I give thee. Hold on. All these, what was Satan after? He was after something. I will give you anything, son of God. Go ahead and read this. The Holy Spirit will fill you. He will light your stomach up in your stomach. You'll know what fire is. This is his word. The spirit brings truth. It's life. It's the flesh that profits nothing. The words that he speaks are life to you. Go ahead and declare that. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if they will fall down and worship me. Did he tell him to stand up and lift his hands up? No. Did he tell him to build him a church? No. Did he tell him that he wanted to march around the city and declare his name? He wanted him to do one thing. And what was that again? Fall Man of down and worship him. Fall down and worship him. Fall down. Who would know better what worship is than Satan himself when Satan was the chief worship leader in heaven? Worship leaders copy the best worship leader that ever lived, Satan himself. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And Yahshua said what? Then say, then, then say to Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord. I preach what the Lord says, not what people say. I'm not a man pleaser. I'm a God pleaser. He's my master, not people. I preach truth. I preach his word. Am I ashamed of his word? Then why are we so quiet? We're so quiet. Shh, Jacob. You're disturbing the system. You've gone too far. No, I haven't gone far enough. What you hear Shout on the rooftops what you hear in the secret place. Shout on the rooftop what I tell you in the dark. I want you to shout in the light. The Holy Spirit is burning in here tonight. He is burning burning with fire tonight because the more truth you speak the higher the anointing and the more power remember this pastors bishops leaders believers the more truth you speak and preach 
the higher the anointing. When you preach a half-truth, there's no anointing. You've got to preach the full gospel. The full gospel that will convict. Conviction is an evidence of an anointing. If there's no conviction in people's hearts, there is no anointing. When God comes, he convicts. He convicts us. He makes us look at ourselves and say, oh, Father, forgive me. It's saying the non-believer comes in, and when God is in the house, he falls on his face. Even when they arrested Jesus, the guards knew enough that you bow to a deity. You know what they did to Jesus? Little did they know they were doing the right thing. It says they bowed to him and says, oh, king, even his enemies bowed. He says, you don't know what you were. 21 or 22? 21. It started, said, started a place Jesus, where. 21. I started 21. 21, Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the, the hour coming when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We Hold on for a second. My statement today is the body of Yahshua Jesus worships, but they do not know what they're worshiping because if they did, they would not be Jacob coming in and asking them, what are you doing? When you know him, when you have seen him, when you have experienced him, you fall as a dead man. Go ahead and read this. You worship what you know not. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We say that again. When the what? When the true? When the what? When the true worshipers? Repeat that. When the true worshipers. When the, hold on. When the true worshipers. Say that again. When the true worshipers. Say that again, pastor. True worshipers. Will what? Worship. Shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Go ahead. For the For Father. The father <laughs> such to worship him. What is that? For the what? Father seeketh such to worship him. For the Father is seeking a body, a remnant. He is seeking a remnant. You won't find the crowds. He is seeking a remnant. Those who he's calling, those who is sold out for him, those who love him. He is seeking those. He is seeking after those who will what? Who will what? Worship him. Now circle the word worship. Since the woman of God is prostrate, you take over here. We got everything going up here now. We got praying, prostrating, and declaring. Go ahead. Me yelling. Go ahead. Uh, here it is. The word worship from the New Testament. It's called proscudio again. Here it is. Declare it. Means to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. Amen. To fawn or crouch. Prostrate oneself in homage. Do reverence to adore. Well, that was the same meaning when it says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And, and from Matthew, isn't it? Yes. Say that again, because I don't hear the word sing or bow or, or sit or stand. Do you? No. Do you, pastor? Do you, bishop? No. Do you, apostle? Do you worship me to listen? Read it. Means to kiss like a dog, licking his master's hand, to fawn or crouch, prostrate oneself in, hum in homage, do reverence to adore. Worship. Is this Jacob's teaching or is this the word of God? Tell me. Word of God. Tell me what I'm not, what, where there's no truth in what is coming out of the mouth of this, this, this vessel. He who hears my sayings and does them. He who hears my sayings and does them. He who hears my sayings and does them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came, the winds blew, and the house stood because it was founded on the rock. But he who hears my sayings and doesn't obey them 
is like a foolish man. The rains came, the winds blew, and that house fell with a mighty crash. Father, cause us to ascend into the heavenlies. When he died, we died. Yes? Yes, amen. You may not want to ascend. You may want to continue eating the low grapes. I'm going to eat the high grapes. Yeah, we'll get that in a second. He says, Son of man, come up here. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. So we're caught up in the spirit. Son of man, look at my sanctuaries. Look at them. They're in ruins. My people don't worship me. They give me honor as I was a man. Look, open your eyes. Let the Spirit show you what the sanctuaries look like. He'll just run it right across your eyes right now. He says, go to the top of the mountain, get the wood, and rebuild my sanctuaries. Then I'll be honored, and then I'll be pleased. Now he says, come. I want you to bring the worship that I have in heaven to the earth. Now, he already has, if you noticed. Didn't he, Pastor? Mrs. Pastor, did you see? He's already brought heaven's worship to earth. That's a miracle, isn't it? Mm. But now he's going to have us take a closer look, a real closer look. So everybody open their eyes. Because this is something you want to learn. Yeah. So I saw a door in heaven open. We'll pick it up from there. A door opened in heaven. And now a door is opening in heaven. He's saying, look. Look at what's going on here. This is the place you live in. The holy of Revelations event. chapter 4 and 5. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as if it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. Whenever he wants to show you something, he says, come up here. Yes. Come on now. Let's hear. Let's hear. Instantly, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. This is where you worship. And one sat on the throne, and he that sat on the throne was to look upon like diamonds and rubies, and there was a rainbow about the throne he, like an emerald. You have to get this into, when you want healing, everybody, where are you going to go? What do you read? Do you read the Bible when you need healing? You go to scriptures, yes? Mm -hmm. Where would you go, pastor, if you wanted healing? Scriptures and throne. Like what particular scriptures would you say? Any one? Isaiah 53? Isaiah 53. Isaiah, right. If you want to get into the throne room, get into the Revelation scriptures. Yes? Revelation chapter 4 and 5. Okay, listen. And around about the throne were 24 seats. And upon the seats I saw 24 elders clothed in white, and they had golden crowns on their heads. It, hold it. Is this where you're worshiping? Is this what you're seeing all the time now, everyone? No, but this is where you're going to see, start seeing it because this is where you're worshiping. Do you believe? Do you believe that you're in the Holy of Holies? Do you believe there is a Holy of Holies? Or do you believe this thing is just like a fairy tale? No, no, no. 
Well, then let's pay attention where we live because this is our real. He says, set your mind and heart on things above, not on the earth. So why are we setting them on the earth? He says, as far as this world goes, you're dead. No, but I want to stay alive. No, you're dead. You're dead if you're born again. If you're born from above, you are. Go ahead. 24 elders dressed in white with golden crowns on the head. Go ahead, woman of God. And out of the throne proceeded lightning, thundering, and voices. And there were seven flaming torches in front of the throne. Catch this. Which are the sevenfold spirits of God. Before the throne where you are, there are seven flaming torches. This is where you're worshiping, which are the seven spirits of God. Everyone catch that. Yeah. Go ahead. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like to crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four living beings full of eyes both before and behind. Do you know this by heart? No. Know it by heart. This is the place you live from now on. So when you minister, you'll know where you're ministering from. Hallelujah. And Jacob will know when he is in there. Of course, healing. Everything has got to take place because you, we are in the glory and in the heartbeat of God. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And the first beast was like a lion. The seven beasts was like a calf. And the third beast had the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes, inside and out. And they rested not day or night, singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, God of heaven's armies, the one who Day and night. Night and day. They never stop crying out what they just cried out. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let thy worship be done on earth as it is in heaven. Are we getting it? Yes. Day and night. Night and day. They never stop crying out. Is worship important according to what I'm hearing? Day and night? It doesn't seem like it's very complicated words either. Now, there are many songs we can sing. You understand? We have many love songs to the Lord. And yes, we're not telling you to cut those songs out. But what you want to do now is to start reaching. We up. bow down. Bow down, we bow down to you, Lord. And we bow down, we bow down. Lay our crowns down at your feet. 